right, hello eighth graders and happy Monday. Today we are going to talk about um, a few different types of government and then a few different aspects of economy. All right, so we're first going to talk about government and last week in class we talked about how if we could go around and travel and visit all different uh, types of countries and groups that we're going to see that they do have some sort of government. Uh, as humans, we do need somebody that we can look to in times of need or challenges and somebody that would be in charge. It would be quite chaotic if countries did not have a form of government um, or if you came to school and there was nobody in charge. Like, I'm sure maybe one day, okay, it might be fun, but then it was going to get chaotic and it could get kind of dangerous and I don't think many people would end up going to school. All right, so governments also make and enforce laws, um, again, all for the safety of the citizens who live within that country. They regulate business and trade and provide aid to people who are in need. So governments help shape culture and economy of a country as well as daily lives of people. Um, so we have a variety of different types of government. Um, even when we take a democracy in a democratic country like the United States is, so is Canada and so is Mexico. But as we continue to study and learn about these countries, we're going to notice that even though we are all a form of a democracy, they're all structured a little bit differently, all right? So a democracy is a form of government in which the people are able to vote, all right? So the people are able um, to elect a leader and then they rule by majority. So pretty soon in the United States, you know, we're going to be having an election and we get to vote for president and then of a majority of other different um, fields for people who are running. Um, most democratic countries, citizens are free to choose our representatives that make and enforce laws. So for example, okay, in the United States, we elect members of Congress, all right? So Congress makes the laws, and then we get to elect and vote for president, then who enforces these laws. Now, we as citizens in the United States, we don't always get to choose and elect for every field. So for instance, as it's in the news with the Supreme Court Justice. So I don't get to vote for who I would want in the Supreme Court Justice, but that is the job of the president. All right, so most democratic governments in the world work again to protect, they protect our freedoms. Now we're going to talk about some governments that limit freedoms, all right? Um, other democracies, again, are going to, and they can restrict some of those freedoms. So again, as we continue in this class and we talk about countries and regions, you're going to see how so many of them vary, okay? Okay, so some other types of government, all right, are uh, monarchies, and we're going to talk about communism, and we're going to talk a little bit about a dictatorship. All right, so monarchy. This is the oldest form of government in the world. So a monarchy, a true monarchy, is going to be ruled directly by a king or queen, all right? They are the head of the royal family. So it's through blood, okay, bloodline of who would be king and who would be queen. Um, let's take Saudi Arabia for instance, okay? So they are ruled by a king. He has executive, legislative, and judicial powers. And a lot of the people who work with him are all part of the same family. Now, some monarchies have just one person who has all the power. Okay, and that used to be very common. That is not very common um, today, all right? Most monarchies, um, they are going to then work with, like a parliamentary monarchy. So they have a, a parliament 
um, that they work with or who makes the laws. And some, they're just um, almost like figure or figureheads. All right, dictatorship. Now, with a dictator, okay, they um, take over. All right, they take over a single powerful ruler that has total control. In a country that is ruled and um, controlled by a dictator, there isn't another political party. There aren't different branches um, of government that this person then has to report to or work with, okay? It's a single ruler. So Iraq under, again, Saddam Hussein. This is a good example of dictatorship. So people who live under a dictatorship, it's not good, okay? They are not free. They have very limited rights. And it's probably a time, of, a scary time to live there, all right? Um, communism. Now, communism is a political party, okay? So you have a communist leader, all right? Um, which the government then owns and dominates all the property, all right? So leaders of most communist governments, again, are not elected by citizens. Again, they are going to be elected, it could be family, they can be elected by the Communist Party, all right? Cuba and North Korea, the government strictly controls then the country's economy and daily life for people. So we will, in this class, talk a little bit about um, history in some countries that were communism, and then we're gonna talk about some countries that today are communism. Now, just like democracy, okay, and just like monarchies, um, there's different levels of them. There, it's not just, you know, like one is built all the same. Okay, there's many different levels and, um, you know, a communist country, one can look very different from the other. Uh, we're going to skip that. All right, so we are going to talk about, really quickly, economies, okay, and this economic activity level. So your book gives a great example, all right, and it's based on food, and you know, we love to talk about food in here, so it's going to be based on cheese, all right, so we're going to talk about cheese for a little bit. Okay, so economic activities. So economic activities are where it's going to talk about how people in a country are going to make a living, all right? Um, so we have primary industry, so level one, a secondary industry, that's two, tertiary, which is three, and then coronary, which of course is going to be four. So our primary industry is going to be the baseline, okay? Farming, okay, anything that we can get from planet Earth, all right? Fishing, mining, okay, this is raw materials. So take cheese, okay? Cheese has milk in it, okay? Milk comes from the cow, all right? We live in a farming community. A lot of your parents and family members are farmers, okay? So this is going to be our primary level. Next, I'm going to take the milk, all right, and I am going to mix it with other ingredients, and this is going to lead to our second, all right? Our second industry uses all these natural resources, all right, raw materials, and they then get a product. So manufacturing is the process in which raw materials are changed into the finished good. So I got my milk. Oh my gosh, I wish I knew what else was in cheese. It's just delicious. All right, and I'm going to make the cheese in the second level. So now I have my third level, tertiary. That took me a while to pronounce that. All right, so this is where I am gonna sell the cheese, all right? I have services are exchanged. So now the cheese has been made and now I'm going to sell it, all right? So people in this level sell the product that they're made, okay? Healthcare workers, mechanics, teachers, clerks, doctors, they don't sell cheese, but let's take my profession, okay? So I'm a teacher. Did I create all of this information I'm teaching you? Like, did I tr 
travel the world and study the globe, and now I'm teaching it to you, okay? Because that would cost a lot of money. Instead, I was given information, all right, and I studied the information, and now I am passing it along to you, all right? A mechanic has learned the traits, all right? And then you can bring your car and they will fix it from what they've learned. Okay, grocery stores, they did not make cheese, they were given cheese and now they're going to sell it. All right, does that make sense? Hope so. Don't know why I ask questions, you can't, I just can't respond to me anyway. It's just the teacher in me. All right, the fourth level, this is the highest level now. We are going to research the cheese, all right? <laughs> the highest level of economic activity. So people making a living are going to work with information rather than goods and often have specialized knowledge and skills. Architects, lawyers, scientists. How long is this cheese going to last? Um, why does it get moldy? When does it get moldy? Is it safe to eat? And so forth. Okay, so the highest level. So those are your four levels. Now we're going to talk about economic systems. And we did bring this up in class a little bit um, last Monday when we watched Human Planet, all right? So we have a traditional economic system, a market, and a command. So traditional, this is when we discuss the people who lived within that coral reef. And we um, talked about how they really didn't have a form of currency. Instead, they would trade seafood for rice or they would trade seafood for fuel, okay? Um, there was no money exchanged. So um, a traditional economy is when people grow their own food and they make their own goods. This was early American history times two, all right? and then they're going to trade and exchange. Market economy, this is going to be the most common that we are going to see globally. This is what the United States have, all right? It's a system based on private ownership, free trade, and competition, all right? This, this is a very healthy type of economy to have. So individuals and businesses are free to buy and sell whatever they wish. All right, prices are based on supply and demand. And we've seen that. So for instance, let's take avocados. So when um, Mexico or California had a frost or they had a drought and their avocados were not as great that season, they're not going to have as many. So the price of avocado, avocados then in the United States are going to increase. But if you have a surplus, you have a lot of a product, then you can lower the price. And this way you can have good competition. Um, I don't know if you purchase a lot of things, but like I like to look for the best price. I will go to multiple grocery stores um, or stores online and I will price compare and sometimes stores will you could be like hey look on my phone like you know your competitors selling it for this price like will you match it and most stores will all right because again there's this competition that they have and then that's healthy okay um, the last is command. Now, usually you'll see command with a communist um, government, um, maybe dictatorship, but I really don't feel we have a true command economy. Um, this is a system which the central government makes all economic decisions, like every single one. That, I can't wrap my mind around that. So the government decides what goods to produce, how much to produce, and what prices they will be. Okay, if you think about that on everything, that's a lot, that's a lot. So again, no country has a purely true 100% command economy, all right? But again, if you're going to compare maybe North Korea and Cuba, okay, though Cuba has changed, but we'll get there, we'll get there. All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about is economic indicators. A lot in class we've been talking about a developed country and a developing country. All right, so what we're going to look for are economic indicators, okay? 
We talked about GDP on Friday, and we talked about the per capita of a GDP. So gross domestic product is what GDP stands for. And on the CIA World Factbook, we saw that there was a lot of GDPs, GDPs, GDPs. So this is the value of all goods and services produced within a country in a single year, okay? Another indicator is the per capita, and this is something that we researched on Friday for Friday's activity. The total GDP divided by a number of people within that country. So again, the average working citizen, okay, adult in the United States brings home, I think we said, 59,800 around there, and then how we compared the countries that were above and the countries that were below. Other indicators are gonna be the level of industrialization, and then again, the overall quality of life, healthcare, literacy rate, okay? There's lots of things that go into telling us if a country is a developed country or a developing country. All right. So again, countries with a strong economy, high quality of life, they have a high per capita. Um, the world's poorest are known as developing. We're also gonna take a look at how a country can maybe have a very high GDP, like they're producing a lot throughout the year, but then you compare it to the per capita of what an average working adult is bringing home and it's extremely low. All right, so there's probably some like corruption in the government or something's going on that's not quite right. And there are a few countries where we'll, we'll talk about that. And let's see, so about two thirds of the people in the world live in developing countries, okay? These countries have, again, a very low GDP. Um, maybe they don't have great land for um, farming. They don't have access to great health care, to drinking water. Um, maybe there was some corruption in government, maybe there's some war, um, but again, all things that we will get to, all right? Um, you are on your own today, all right, for your worksheet and your notes. Email me if you do have questions, and we are going to test on Wednesday, all right? I just want to get this chapter done before we um, go into break on MEA. I, I truly think this is going to be best, but do not fret because it will be an open book test, all right? Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Please reach out to me, not your friends, if you have questions on the sheet. I look kind of funny with the thing. There we go. All right, so have a good Monday and good luck.